This is my homeland, the highlands of Mexico, a land of fertile valleys and peaceful villages. On a hillside overlooking such a valley is the place where I was born, the village of Santiago de Cototepec. Although it is only 60 miles from busy Mexico City, Cototepec has changed little in nearly 200 years. My people still grow crops in these fields, which were once cultivated by the Aztecs. Tlacotepec is a quiet place. From planting time until the harvest is over, most of the people spend their working days in the nearby fields. Life in our village is simple, and there are only a few shops. Often on pleasant mornings, the older women sell fruits and vegetables along the streets. Since there are no department stores in villages such as ours, once each week a woman comes from a larger town to set up a dry goods business at one of our street corners. It is good manners for our children to show respect for their relatives by kissing their hand when they meet. After the spring rains, our hillsides are bright with blossoming mustard. The land stretching across the valley to the distant Sierra de Toluca turns green with new growth. In the early morning, most of the people start their daily work in the fields outside the village. Some of my neighbors like my friend Alfredo, have flocks of sheep. Many of our farmers still use wooden plows, as men once did everywhere before they learned to make plows of iron. Each family cultivates an acre or two of land on which a small annual tax is paid to the government. Our biggest crop is corn, which we call maíz. It is the principal food of the Mexican people. Although the central plateau is within the tropic zone, our valley is nearly 8,000 feet above the sea. And in this climate, the corn grows very well. The brown tassels on the green stalks tell the farmer that the plants are full grown and the ears of corn have begun to form. The corn silk indicates that the kernels are maturing on the cob. This means food for our people during the long winter months. As autumn draws near, the farmer inspects an ear or two of corn to see if it is nearly time to harvest his crop. In addition to corn, many other things are grown in the fields near the village. Chicharos, or garden peas, are harvested in late summer and are used as a filling in tacos. Albas, known elsewhere as lima beans, are planted along the sides of the steep hills. In our part of Mexico, we grow a cactus plant called the maguey. This plant has been used in many ways since early times. The Aztecs spun its fibers into rope and coarse cloth. Today, the maguey is grown chiefly for its strong fiber, which is used in making heavy bags. Also, it produces nutritious milk, which we call aguamiel, or honey water. My neighbor, Nicolas, has several acres of maguey. He extracts the aguamiel with a long, hollow gourd, then empties the gourd into a sheepskin that he carries on his back. To get this milky juice, Nicolas scoops the soft, pulpy sediment from a hollow he has made in the stem of the plant. This hollow then slowly fills with juice. Nicolas can extract this honey water twice each day for six months of the year. Aguamiel takes the place of cow's milk with many of our children. When it is allowed to ferment, it becomes a drink known as pulque. Most of our land is used to grow crops that can be eaten or sold in the markets, 
so there is little pasture land left for the cows. Wild mustard is used to feed our cattle. Our women help to feed the cattle by gathering the wild mustard, which grows in the patches of green corn. My friend Carlos has no burro or mule, so he must carry the heavy bundles of mustard on his own strong shoulders. It takes a great amount of green fodder to feed the cattle. All through the hot summer days, burros toil along the stream beds and up the twisting roads to Kakotepec, carrying loads of food for the cattle. A neighbor riding his burro to work in his patch of corn or maguey, or another bringing lambs to the village for sale, is the usual traffic along the road to Kakotepec. For as long as we can remember, the morning sun finds Aunt Tomasa trudging up the road to the village where she will exchange a few herbs for some tortillas. There is no gas or coal for the stoves in our houses, and the nearby trees were cut down many years ago. To get fuel, the men must journey to the foothills of the distant mountains where there is wood to be had for the cutting. Some of the men use their spare days to cut wood, which they will sell to their neighbors or in the market town of Toluca. At the end of a long day's work, the woodcutters and their heavily laden burros return to the village with enough wood for their families and some to sell. With the money made from the sale of the extra wood, they will purchase coffee, sugar, or other luxuries. Since there are no large rivers or lakes in this part of Mexico, water is very precious. The women of our village do most of the family laundry at small water holes along the bed of a nearby stream. This is not an easy way to wash clothes, but our women enjoy gathering at these places where they exchange the latest news while the washing is being done. The clothes are dried on the nearby grass or bushes. Water for household needs must be carried in cans or jars, for there is no plumbing in the houses of Tacotepec. A cement tank near the church provides for the entire village. It is fed by a spring on the hillside, from which water flows along a small channel of stone and mortar to the tank. Most of the men of the village do their own carpentry and masonry work. Since ancient days, our houses have been built of adobe bricks. Today, many of them are faced with plaster, which often is painted in bright colors. In my village, the boys play a kind of handball in a court they built for themselves near the church. In the larger cities of my country, baseball is a favorite game. Children play simple games, like this one of hopscotch. Community life revolves about the church. In most villages, the church is the oldest building. Mexico is a land of beautiful churches. Their builders took great pride in the ornate carvings on cornices and doorways. On Sunday morning, the entire village attends church services. The women wear their best rebosos, and the straw hats of the men are decorated with a feather or bit of ribbon. Children of the elementary and secondary grades go to our village school. It has a director or principal and there are eight teachers. In our country, a teacher is called professor. Usually classes are held in the school rooms, but sometimes both teacher and pupils enjoy studying in the sunlit patio. 
This is a class in physiology, and each pupil must draw a diagram of the human body and name each major part. The teacher uses many charts and diagrams to help the children learn their lessons. At the end of the day, the pupils are assembled in the patio and must await their turn to be dismissed, one class at a time. The girls march out first, followed by the boys. Once outside, the lines vanish and boys and girls find their friends as they start homeward. Community problems in Pacotepec, which need attention, are in the hands of a group of our neighbors known as delegados or delegates. The delegados are headed by a comisario or commissioner. This group is chosen by an assembly of the people each year. This year, Salvador is the comisario. He presides at the meetings of the delegados and reports to the Presidente Municipal who lives in the market town of Toluca. Salvador has called this meeting to discuss the problem of water, an eternal one among our people. Here on the central plateau, there is no rainfall from October to June, and the water in the village tank is dangerously low. After discussing the problem, the group inspect the tank at first hand before deciding upon their report to the Presidente Municipal in Toluca. Uh, he is the representative of the state government. The group decides that the village needs another tank. They will request that the government supply them with the materials so they can build a new one. They hope to increase the water supply for the next year. Mexico is a land of fiestas, most of which are related to holy days. Everyone in Tacotepec enjoys the feast day of our patron saint when all the village is gay with color and sound. On the morning of this day, a parade winds its way through the village to the church in honor of Santiago, the saint who has watched over our village for so many generations. that binds our village to the outside world is the old bus that rocks and groans across the valley to the town of Toluca. On market day, the people of my village load their bundles on the bus. For a few centavos, they can ride into Toluca about six miles away, and their bundles are carried free. In the market of Toluca are many things which have been made in our valley. The petates, or reed mats, which we use as carpets, mattresses, and curtains in our homes. The pottery ware, made by hand and used in the kitchens of every Mexican village house. The brushes, made from tough grass, gathered on the slopes of the mountains. And the fruits and vegetables, harvested from the fields of a dozen villages scattered about the countryside. Market day is a time for trading, of relaxation from work in the patios and the fields. Here, my people exchange news and send messages to friends and relatives in other villages. After selling their loads of produce, tortillas, and agua miel at the market, most of the people walk home to save the cost of the bus fare. 
They return along quiet roads across the broad valley to their homes. These are my neighbors in the village of Tlacotepec, people who live a simple life, unchanged in many ways since the days of the Aztecs. <laughs> Thank you.